I can only say that this gallery is a little unusual because it has uh, uh, mostly blue chip paintings, uh, the ones that are the top guns in this country and some other countries as well, with a heavy, heavy emphasis on uh, Canadian paintings. And uh, it's one of the few places in Canada where you will find uh, the uh, well-established top guns we have, such as Tom Thompson, Lauren Harris, Emily Carr, and Rhea Pell, other members of the group of seven. We have them all, and uh, there's lots to choose from. We worked hard at this for the past 54 years and established a clientele which is quite loyal and which expects the best of us. And they're not interested in pictures, just paintings. And it has to be the best of the best. And in that category, we have a few. And uh, what we're up against, of course, is that compared to about 20 years ago or more, we have uh, 10 times the uh, buyers with 100 times the money at least chasing about half the paintings because this is a vanishing uh, supply because these people are no longer with us. They've done their job mostly from 1920 and up to the present. And so we're proud of some of the things we've been able to get. And I think my daughter Marina will uh, show you some of the highlights that may be of interest and which either doesn't exist anymore or certainly is not available anywhere. And quite often what happens is that many of the families who bought especially the group of seven over the years from 1920 on have passed away and uh, so they've handed them down to their uh, family or their children but also many of them wound up in museums so they can still be seen but can never be bought anymore so that's where we are today so when there's something available which says uh, top quality will uh, try and go after it, but the pictures that were $75 uh, after the uh, Second World War are now running as high as a million, two million, or three million and more. So a lot of people can't buy them anymore, which the hell they had, but uh, that's life. So uh, we don't charge admission, we welcome people to come in and have a look and they be the judge. So what we sell here is um, enjoyment with upside. My name is Miranda Christensen and I welcome you to the Art Emporium. It was established in 1897 which makes this gallery the oldest gallery in Canada west of Toronto. I'm going to take, talk to you today about one of my favorite paintings in the gallery which is this Emily Carr painting from 1913. It is from Beacon Hill Park in Victoria and you'll notice that the subject matter are arbutus trees, which makes this a very special painting. Because at this time, Emily Carr had finished a lot of her training in France, and she was painting in Normandy. And so many of the subjects that we see from this fauve style are actually of villages and landscapes in Normandy. But because this has the Victoria and West Coast of Canada subject matter, it makes it extremely rare and this is one of the only ones you will ever see and possibly the only one that is currently for sale. The Vancouver Art Gallery doesn't even have one like this. This exceptional painting was painted by David Milne in 1911 in Van Cortland Park which is just north of present-day Manhattan. It's when he was living in New York at the time and it's very atypical for David Milne because often we consider his work from the 1920s and 30s, his works on canvas and his watercolors, but it's important to look at paintings like this to see where he was going and where he started from. So you can see the very post-impressionist style done by a Canadian painter with a North American landscape subject. This is one of the highlights of our collection. It is North Shore Lake Superior, depicting Pick Island. It's obviously a Lauren Harris. It's very, very typical of his style at the time uh, when he was painting on these 12 by 15 boards. This painting was actually the sketch for a canvas, which is currently in the Montreal Museum. You'll see paintings like this sell 
at auctions across Canada, um, always in the millions of dollars range. There was one currently. Um, there's a few coming up at Heffel, and they recently sold one from the same area. It went for three and a half million. This little gem is Tamarack Swamp by none other than Tom Thompson. Extremely rare painting. You don't see a lot of Tom Thompsons on the market anymore. And that was because he passed away in 1917. So he didn't produce as much work as many of the other uh, later members of the Group of Seven. This was created in 1916, just before he passed. And it shows two things that are so strong with Thompson's paintings. One is the sky terrific motion with those clouds, and the second is the fall display. I don't know another painter in Canada who could depict those fall colors like Tom Thompson. Another perfect example of a Lauren Harris painting is this sketch from Constellation Lake. It's a perfect depiction of the clean, crisp lines that are so characteristic of Harris's paintings. It's really when he was getting into theosophy, he was about the purity of light, and those smooth geometric forms. This extremely rare painting is one of the most unique pieces we've ever had the pleasure of displaying in the Art Emporium. It was entitled Mid-Century from 1949-1950 and it was painted by Jean-Paul Riappel over the holidays, hence the title. It was actually given to his common-law wife, Joan Mitchell. They were together for over 20 years living in France, around Paris and also outside of there around Giverny where Monet lived. This was a gift to her so we understand that it must have been extremely important. It has been exhibited in the National Gallery of Canada. It was also part of the 1962 Venice Biennale. It truly is a gem. This visual masterpiece was created by Jean-Paul Riappel. It was a 1954 oil on canvas and it was acquired directly from the original owners who lived in New York and they purchased it directly from the artist so it has never even been in a gallery before and that was in 1959 in Switzerland. It is in remarkable condition considering its size. It is 79 inches by 79 inches and it's a terrific example of the process that is so key in Jean-Paul Riappel's work. Big palette knife strokes drip over top, another palette knife stroke. So layer after layer, this would have taken so long to dry. It is amazing, the process. People talk about this in terms of a mosaic and drips all together. There are barely any cracks at all in this. It is a truly pristine painting. This important Riappel is a phenomenal example of his work from 1949. It's what he was painting when he was living in New York at the height of abstract expressionism when he was painting with people such as Jackson Pollock. You can see the extreme contrast between the whites and the very rich dark reds, dark greens, and blacks in here. It's somewhat reminiscent of a bourgeois, so it's important to see bourgeois as his teacher influencing him and where he came to and then where he went. You can see the use of the palette knife, very thick in there, and there's a very important kind of focal spot in there with the white. So our eye is drawn towards something, but then it's moved all over the canvas with those extreme drips that cover the entire surface of the piece. This is Jack Shadbolt in 1957 doing Boats on the Sand in Collier. This oil on canvas is a fantastic example of the artist's work when he was in Europe. And it shows something that's quite typical of Jack Shadbolt's, and that's the overpainting. You can see that there's some those colors underneath if you look around where the cords are. And it's not so much that he painted those cords that go to the boats, it's that he didn't paint them. And that you can tell that with the sand, he must have painted over something in the background. These paintings are very in demand for Jack Shadbolt's work, and we find them difficult to hang on to. They are becoming more and more rare over the years as some of our younger clients and our newer collectors are coming in and wanting something just a little bit more modern for their homes. At the Art Emporium, we don't only sell Canadian works. We also do represent some 
American masters within our gallery. One of them is Alexander Calder, which is the painting on gua the gouache that you see closer up. It's from 1975. And I wanted to hang this painting next to the BC Binning because both of these artists were extremely influenced by architecture and engineering. And it's very apparent in with with their forms. They have these geometric forms, these circles and spirals, triangles, and even though they had slightly different backgrounds, they are still sometimes headed in the same direction. And I think it's interesting to contrast an American and a Canadian painter side by side, especially when they use such similar colors. They really do complement each other.